Hello folks, welcome to my new video. I haven't posted for a while, I've uh, been busy at work and that. But I might start doing some more videos now on YouTube. Uh, in the past, I've showed you how to make transmitters, like this one. Did this one about three years ago, I think. And now this one. That's a two stage transmitter. It's got an oscillator stage and audio amplifier stage, same with this one. And this was a single stage audio input. These have got microphones. So, I mean, to build these yourself, you'd have to source all the parts and make your own circuit board. It takes a bit of time and effort, really. It's not worth doing when you can buy these from China. I think I paid £2 delivered or something. Just £2.50 maybe. I think it was just over £2. Pennies. I mean, you can't complete bar the antenna. Uh, you know, it's a single stage, single single transistor, it's only got three resistors, I think it's got seven capacitors, battery holder, switch, microphone, circuit board, supply your own antenna. I mean, it's the cheapest way to do it. I mean, you know, if you're just getting into soldering, it's, a, it's an ideal little kit to build this. Ideal starter, if you're getting into transmitters. Should we build it and see if it works? I'm sure it will. Come on then, let's build it. Just a quick note before this video starts. I noticed when I was compiling this video, my nails look a mess. <laughs> or women's nails. Well, I do a lot of electronics. I do a lot of electronic work. I, I design and make these on eBay, so I'm always messing about with electronics and do a lot of soldering. And you need long nails, it just makes working with electronics a lot easier, picking stuff up, holding stuff down. So, please don't leave nasty comments about my nails, I know they do look a mess. They look very good in the video, but I just thought I'd do a note. That's what I sell on eBay. I sold hundreds of them. These go well over a mile. These are on 434 MHz. If you're interested, just have a look on eBay. There's my eBay username. UHF Transmitter. Oh, let's crack on with this video. Okay, get started. Here's the kit. Very basic kit. It does come with instructions. But I don't think they're in English. Circuit board. No, that's showing. Oh, I think we'll get by without them. Let's sort the parts in order. Here's the parts all sorted. Not very really many parts in this basic kit, it's only a basic transmitter, so there aren't going to be many parts. We've only got three resistors. Got the coil, the microphone, on off switch, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven capacitors, battery holder, and the circuit board, which is clearly marked. I mean, for the price of this kit, you can't go wrong, can you? Should we build it? Okay, we'll start with the um, resistors. As you can see, I've made a blown up copy of the circuit. So, what we'll start with is that we'll start with R2, which is there. which is a 22k resistor. You can either check a line if you're not sure of the colour codes with the resistors or you can use a multimeter. Not sure if you can see that. So what we're looking for is so a 22k. So we'll do it this way. So that one. There we go. That's a 22k. So I'll put that one in first. So if you look on the circuit board, if you've never done this type of thing before, even these cheap boards from China are quite well marked out. So you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that there. That's R2, the 22K. So what we'll do, we'll place all the resistors in first. And what we'll do is then we'll solder in afterwards. So just place it in. 
Just like that. I will solder them in after. Alright, we've done R2, 2, 2, 22 can, so we'll do R1 now, which is 2.2, 2.2 K. Stick that in. Our last resistor is this R3, 220 ohm. Should just at the bottom out. What we'll do now, just chop the ends off and get it nice and neat, ready for soldering. As you can see there, that's the three resistors in. All trimmed down, that focused. Let's solder it in. Okay, solder the resistors in. Now I've put a load of flux down, so it's always good to use as much flux as you can. Get a lot better job. That's it. There's three resistors. R1, that's the, the load resistor for the mic. You can use different values to make the air microphone more sensitive or less sensitive, so you can, you can play about with that. R2, that turns on the base of the only transistor in this very basic FM transmitter. And R3 is like a load resistor, limits the current. You can mess about with all the values on these, Let's see what sort of results you get. Very simple circuit. Okay, so next stage is capacitors. So we'll do C1, C2, that's both the 104s. They're all marked up clearly, these caps, so you can't go wrong. The 104, C1, 104 cap, C2. What we'll do, we'll trim these as we go along because we don't want too many big leads sticking out, it just looks a mess and they get in the way of one another. So we'll, we'll trim them and we'll solder them all in afterwards. Okay, solder the resistors in. Now I've to put a load of flux down, so it's always good to use as much flux as you can. Get a lot better job. There's three resistors, R1, that's the, the load resistor for the mic, you can use different values to make the air microphone more sensitive or less sensitive, so you can, you can play about with that. R2, that turns on the base of the only transistor in this very basic FM transmitter, and R3 is like a load resistor, limits the current. You can mess about with all the values on these, Let's see what sort of results you get. Very simple circuit. Okay, so next stage is capacitors. So we'll do C1, C2, that's both the 104s. They're all marked up clearly, these caps, so you can't go wrong. The 104, C1, 104 cap, C2. What we'll do, we'll trim these as we go along because we don't want too many big leads sticking out, it just looks a mess and they get in the way of one another. So we'll, we'll trim them and we'll solder them all in afterwards. C3. Like I say, all the capacitors are clearly marked, so you can't get wrong. When you are placing these in and you've cut the leads, just if you've got nails just, or whatever, just bend them over like that and get them flat so they don't drop out. That way they're staying, they're staying situ. Cool. Okay, our next capacitors are C4, which is here. Can you see that there? Right, just next to the coil. So this is part of the tank circuit. This is what creates the transmitter. Um, quite an amazing circuit for what it is. I think there's you know, a couple of components and they operate at amazing speeds. 
So these are critical parts. Uh, like I say, that's the tank circuit, that's the feedback, 10p. Should we get them in next? Have a look online to see how these tank circuits work and um, learn how these oscillators actually work. Very simple, but amazing speeds. Alright, should we get them in next? Okay, C4. Clearly marked on the board, like I say, 30p. 30pf. That one's in. Um, should we do the 10p next? Is that C5? Can you see that? Just drop that in. A6, the other 30 PF, drop that in. Such a cheap board, clearly, clearly marked. Great, isn't it? And the last one, which is the output, so the antenna, which is C7. Okay, all the caps are in, like I say. Always use flux, it makes soldering a lot easier and it gives you a lot neater results. So, plenty of flux, you can always wipe it off afterwards. Uh, that's pretty nice, isn't it? That's it, that's all the caps in. Very good. <laughs> Not quite, I didn't see this one in the middle. Bang on. All in. Okay, next is the transistor, the um, holy transistor on this circuit. It's clearly marked up the shape of the transistor, so you can't go wrong there. That's where you use that. You can use other transistors, or two N three nine nine four and loads of others. Let's solder it in. Okay, let's get the only transistor in. Okay, next is the four turn coil, which is there, yeah, in the diagram, which goes there. Now, what to do is make sure you scrape off the enamel, because if you don't, it won't solder in, so make sure you give it a good scrape and get rid of all the enamel. Just be careful as you're doing it. You may just need to open out the turns of the coil so it fits in the circuit, so just spread them out a bit a little bit, maybe a half a mil or so between the coils in each turn. There we go. You can see that. Cool. See, just drop the coil in. There we go. Lovely jab light. Just cut the coil down to size so it looks neat. Uh, plenty, plenty of flux on the coil because it's quite thick. That's good enough. Uh, I don't look. I'm not happy with that. It's a big blob. Oh, it's a look a bit tidier than that. Um, I certainly weren't happy with this. It's soldered in right, but there's a bit of a gap here. 
quick one of these is a bit of an animal. That's going to have to do. I don't like big blobs, but it'll have to do. Okay, folks, not a lot left now. Battery holder next. Now we've got this, the microphone on an antenna. The antenna didn't come with the kit, but a bit of wire. Yeah, I do. So, obviously, you can just go with the shape of the silk screen. So, it'll only go bomb by. Just like that. Battery holder next, I fluxed it. I'll clear that up afterwards. Now the microphone, that's easy enough. Just make sure you get this about way around. The ground is on the outside, so it's not going to quite fit in, but I'll fit in at an angle, but that'll do. The microphone which is here on the circuit. Our transistor is there, a coil, tag circuit is just there. So we've uh, got the switch next and the antenna. So we'll supply our own antenna, that's the only part you'll need. Let's get it done. Next is the on off switch. Amazing with such a little cheap transmitter, it even comes with that. Okay, I couldn't be bothered trimming them. Very good. Oh, well, it's all complete apart from the antenna. The only thing this kit doesn't come with. It's in tenable, well, but you know, I've got one here, it's about 120 centimetres, but you could use a shorter one. Obviously, the longer the antenna, the better the range, but being a very basic single stage transmitter, it isn't going to go far anyway. But I get you a few hundred feet, and you have a couple hundred feet with an antenna this size, so. Should we get an antenna in, shall we? Oh, it goes here on the circuit. Here on the circuit board, TX. That's transmission app. In between C4 and C5 is the output, C7. Let's get it in. Okay, it's the last bit of soldering on this transmitter. I've used flux. All done. Let's clean the board up. Whenever you do these boards, or any board, right, you've got a lot of flux on the board. It looks a mess. So I've got some Piece of beer cleaner or flux cleaner. We've got a spray. Just remove all the flux and dry it off afterwards. So it's got to look a lot nicer, wouldn't it? Okay, that's all done. Not too bad. It's quite hard soldering actually and, and filming it over the that one doesn't look too good, is it? Let's have a look. That one is it? I don't know. It looks bad on camera, but it looks good here. The coil. That's good enough anyway. We'll, we'll test this. But, there's a turner in. Should I get me a little frequency um, counter ice? I've got a better look, it works. Okay folks. <laughs> Does it work? Does this cheap, cheap transmitter even work? Alright, here's I've got a fresh battery here. So pop that in, shall we? It's a bit tight. That's gone in. Okay, there's no adjusters. To, on this type of transmitter, you'll get a lot of variable capacitor. Uh, he doesn't got one, so the only way we're going to adjust this transmitter, adjust its frequency, is by compressing and expanding this coil. So, shall we zoom in? God, you can see this is well, well worn, it's filthy. 
but I'll use this in my garage. I've got a couple of these. Okay, let's turn this frequency counter on. Transmitter. Oh, it's alive. Oh my god, that's well out of the FM radio frequency, isn't it? It's 114 megahertz, so what we'll do, we can press this coil and hopefully we get him within 108. There's 109. Okay, 106.5. Alright, let's get the radio. Alright, we'll try and tune it into my beat up battered old Sony radio. Now I've had about 25 years, I've used this on loads of videos. So my notes on, what was it on? 106.5. As you can see, the coil there is quite compressed. You see that coil there? Right, so I have to crush it right in to get it onto the um, radio band, so FM radio band. So you probably could do with a 5 turn coil. feedback so that's changing okay lovely job there so now the microphone's working I don't know if you can hear that but that's me talking back for the radio great we'll give it a little test okay here's a transmitter here downstairs right next to my TV I'll do tune in and more rain to come. There is a risk of flooding. Still going to go signal. Quite breezy though out there at the moment. Winds temporarily east there this evening. That's going to allow things to turn a bit chillier. Brought for a time in Scotland. Brilliant. That's not too bad, does it? For a simple little transmitter, I mean, you know, it's got great audio, for a single, for a single stage transmitter with one transistor, listen to that, that is a TV downstairs, and it would go two or three hundred foot, or more, depending on how wide the antenna is and how long your antenna is, but a great little starter kit, you can't go wrong. I do recommend it, Roman. Look at that for a simple circuit. And it works. There's some of my old ones. Well, I will do one or two more of these um, transmitter videos, buying them from China, these cheap ones, but I'll do two or three stage ones next. We'll see how they go. Look after yourself, folks, and see you next time. Okay, we've tested it, and as you can see, as you've seen in the um, last part of the video, it works. We tested it with the TV, and surprisingly, you get a decent audio output as well. Considering it hasn't got an uh, amplifier stage on the microphone, uh, works better on a fault, to be honest. But they're not very stable. There's no buffer stage or amplifier stage after this, after this um, tank circuit, so... If you get near this antenna or near the transmitter itself, the frequency is going to move slightly. So it's ideal if it's left in, you know, in place and you don't move it if you, if you don't want to keep tuning your radio in. As you can see, it's one of these tiny little frequency uh, frequency analyzers. Not a cheap piece, but they work. You know, they do, do, do a basic job like this. So we've got it on. Transmitter's off at the moment, so we turn the transmitter on. Oh, there's a signal, as you can see. But you'll see if I get near the antenna, you can see the frequency just drifts slightly. Come away. If I get near the antenna, you see the frequency moves slightly. So they're not very stable. Yeah, you, know, you can see that frequency move. I see it on 106.7. Now, if I get near the antenna, when a 5.9, it does move quite a bit. But it left in place with the antenna, not moved at all. Um, it's down frequency until the battery, you know, goes down. 
I just thought I'd show you that. Not the most stable, but a very basic transmitter. Bye.